I'd like to welcome each one of you today to our uh, devotional study. We are in Mark chapter 15, and we're looking at verses 16 through 23 today. Keep in mind, in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus is pictured as the ultimate servant. And uh, as we come into these verses, we see him being mocked uh, as a king and then being led away as a criminal. So in Mark chapter 15, verse 16... Uh, we find these words. It says, And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praternium, and they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple, and plagued a crown of thorns, and put it about his head, and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees, worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him, and put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him onto the place, Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. So as we uh, come into these verses, first of all, we see in these verses how they mock Christ. They know that he has... Um, that they are calling him the king of the Jews, and they are mocking him for that, and uh, his kingdom is mocked, and we see that one of the ways that they mock him is they give him a purple robe and a crown. Of course, a purple robe was a signification of royalty, and uh, of course, the crown also, but it was uh, a crown of thorns um, rather than it being a, a royal crown. And it says, it tells us about this in verse 16 and 17. It says, When the soldiers lay him away into the hall called Praternium, they called together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple, and plaited a crown of thorns, and put it upon his head. It's important for us to realize that in doing this, that this was a complete mockery of the Lord Jesus Christ. They knew that he was the one who was the king of the Jews, and as a result of that, they mock him and and even go further than mock him, we see that the king is smitten, and in mockery they worship him in verses 18 and 19. It says, They began to salute him, Hail, king of the Jews! And they smote him on the head with a reed, and did spit upon him, and bowing their knees, worshipped him. All of the things that they're doing in this passage, they are doing as an outright mockery to the Son of God. You know, as I was studying these verses and thinking about them, I was reminded of what it says back in Isaiah chapter 50. Of course, in Isaiah chapter 50, this is a prophecy that was written about the Lord Jesus Christ uh, 700 years before he uh, was even born. And the Bible tells us uh, this in Isaiah chapter 50 and in verse 6. It says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair, I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So even as we come into these verses, that that these this verse that prophesies for us what the Lord Jesus Christ would go through in His death, even there we see that He knew about the mockery, that He knew about the beatings and uh, the spitting and the shame and all of the things that was going with that. But He willingly gave Himself on that cross of Calvary so that you and I could have eternal life. It's important for us to remember that what Jesus endured on that cross, and even going to that cross, the mockery and the beating and the shame, all of those things were things that we deserved. The Bible says, "...who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree." And all of the things that he faced that day were really things that we deserved. But yet at the same time, we need to realize that yes, on that day that he... Uh, faced mockery, that he faced spitting upon, that he faced a beating, that he faced a cruel death upon the cross, and all of those things, But and they mock him as a king, but one day, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, and we see that in Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. And, and on that day, we see that people mocked him, but one day, the one whom they were judging, the Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be the one who is a judge of all the earth, and every single person who has ever lived will stand before him, either at the great white throne judgment, as a person who's never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, to find out that their end result and that their fate 
is eternity in the lake of fire, or they will stand before the judgment seat of Christ, where our works will be brought into account before God. But friends, one day every knee will bow to him, and every tongue will confess. So we see that Jesus is mocked as a king, but then also they lead him about as a criminal. And Jesus Christ was led away by the hands of the Roman soldiers in the same way that a criminal that was condemned to death would be led away. We see that in verse 20, where it says, And when they had mocked him, they took off their purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. They led him out to crucify him in the same way that they would have led criminals to the hill of crucifixion. Friends, they are treating our precious Lord Jesus Christ like he was a criminal. And all of this he went through and he endured for you and for me. And as they go that day towards Golgotha, we see there that Simon is compelled to bear the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ in verse 21. And friends, let me remind you today that every single person who is a loyal servant of the Lord Jesus Christ must take up their cross and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, we must not simply be followers of him. We must be disciples of him who take up our cross and follow him. Listen to what it says in Luke chapter 9. And in verse 23, we find these words. Jesus is speaking. And he says in Luke 9, 22, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Friends, that is his will for us as believers, that we would deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him. That is one of the things that we must do in order to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Luke 14 verse 27 Jesus is speaking about the cost of discipleship and considering the cost of being a disciple. And he, and he talks about the demands of a disciple. And in verse 27 of Luke 14, it says, Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Friends, it does us well to stop and to remember the cost of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, you hear people talk about salvation is free and never costs anything. And, that, and you know, and, and that's true. The price of salvation ha is free. It has been paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. But for the person that places their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and repents of their sin and comes to him for salvation, even though salvation is free, friends, let me remind you, it costs to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It costs to be a follower of him. But friends, the benefits of that are so far beyond what we could ever imagine. And we shortchange ourselves when we choose not to pay the cost of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now as we come back into the passage that we're looking at, and Jesus is mocked as a king and led away as a criminal, we then see in verse 22 that there's a hill outside of Jerusalem which is shaped like a skull, which is known as Golgotha, where we believe the Lord was crucified. It says there in Mark 15, 22, it says they bring him unto the place Golgotha, which is being interpreted the place of the skull. Then in verse 23, we see that Christ is offered a drink. It says, They gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. Friends, the, the drink was given very simply for the reason of numbing the pain of the crucifixion. But the Lord did not receive that drink. You say, why, why wouldn't he? Why didn't he receive the drink? Well, friends, Jesus did not receive that drink because he wanted to endure it in its full senses as he paid the price for your singing mine upon the cross of Calvary. He loved us so much, friends, that when he paid the price upon the cross of Calvary, he felt the full effects of the pain and the agony of the cross and the beatings and the scourgings and the mockings that he went through on his way to the cross. And friends, there's only one reason that he ever would have done that, and that is his love for you and for me. One of the best well-known verses in all of the Word of God, John 3.16, says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, friends, the Bible tells us the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Friend, let me ask you today, what have you done with God's gift? Have you rejected it or have you accepted God's gift of eternal life? If you have not yet, I encourage you, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation.